Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. My name is Shannon, and today I'm going to be going over a book haul with you guys. I uh, picked up a lot of books here recently, but first, before I go over that, I wanted to talk a little bit about my book, Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade. For those of you who don't know, I am an author. Uh, this was my first book, Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade. I go into detail, for anyone who likes true crime and history, I go deep into detail on the crime itself, the history of the event, the victims, the suspects, and I present to you my case for who I believe Jack the Ripper actually was. This is a theory unlike anything you've ever heard before. Uh, it's a suspect that longtime researchers into the Ripper haven't really gone into. Uh, some have kind of brought it up in jest, uh, but no one has ever really taken it seriously until now. Uh, this is not one of the usual suspects. This is someone who history remembers as being a very, a very kind and delicate soul. The readers from the UK who have read this book haven't really presented much of a, a good review of it. However, U.S. readers and Canadian readers, and that's because the individual who I claim is Jack the Ripper is a very well-known figure in British culture and very beloved historical figure as well. They claim that because he wasn't able, no one would believe that he was able to seduce prostitutes that he would have killed them. Uh, I never once say, state in my book that he ever tried to pick up a prostitute. In fact, the most likely possibility is that he actually came up behind them, knocked them unconscious, or choked them before he killed them. And I tell you why in the book. So make sure you check out Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade. It's available on Audible, where it's narrated by the very talented Ben Hunter. It's also on ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Uh, also, I have two other books coming out for juvenile horror fans. Uh, that is Hollow Screams. Hollow Screams, The Day of the Dolls is out now in paper book and ebook, available on Amazon. And Hollow Screams, Ghost House, will be coming out soon. It's currently out in ebook. Uh, it's in review right now for publication in paperback. Uh, you can find those on Amazon. You will have, have to type in the full title, uh, Hollow Screams Day of the Dolls or Hollow Screams Ghost House. Uh, being that they're brand new and being that I'm not a very well-known author yet, uh, you do have to type in the full name or you can type in my name, S.M. Cornthwaite, C-O-R-N-T-H-W-A-I-T-E. And they should come up that way as well. Uh, that's for... Uh, readers seven and up. Uh, it's kind of in the lines of Are You Afraid of the Dark, the Disney Chills, and Goosebumps books. So without further ado, being that it's October, I wanted to go over my book haul with you guys. It's a very ghoulish book haul, uh, if I do say so. First book on the list is The Ghost Studies. By Brandon Masulo. I don't know if you can see it that well. There you go. New Perspectives on the Origins of Paranormal Experiences. Uh, I began listening to the audiobook of this on Scribed, and I enjoyed it, so I thought I'd buy the paperback version. Uh, here is the description on the back. What causes ghostly experiences? Are ghosts real? Why do certain people report numerous ghostly encounters and others none? For centuries, these questions have intrigued, puzzled, and be bedeviled science, skeptics, and even believers. Based on cutting-edge re research and new theories, the Ghost Studies provides insight into some of life's greatest mysteries. This fascinating book is far more than a compilation of ghost stories. It provides scientific explanations for paranormal occurrences. And there's the rest of it. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. My allergies 
are going a little bit nuts. So I'm not really able to uh, catch my breath as well as I would like right now. Um, so anyway, there's that. Uh, the second book, uh, let's go ahead and move this off to the side. I purchased this along with uh, three others uh, yesterday at Barnes & Noble. The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. I began reading it last night. I'm on chapter four now. Here's the description. There's something wrong with Ashburn House. Everyone knows about Ashburn House. They whisper that its old owner went mad and restless ghosts still walk the halls. But when Adrian, desperate and in need of a place to stay, inherits the crumbling old mansion, she only sees it as a lifeline until darkness falls. Strange messages are etched into the walls. Furniture moves when she leaves the room. And great... And a grave hidden in the depths of the forest hints at a terrible, unforgivable secret. Something twisted... Something twisted lives in her house, its hungry eyes ever watchful, chasing the threads of a de decades-old mystery. It isn't long before she realizes she's become prey to something deeply unnatural and intensely resentful. She has no idea how to escape. She has no idea how to survive. Only one thing is certain. Ashburn's dead are not at rest. <laughs> Pretty cool. So while I was at a, a Barnes & Noble yesterday, I was looking for some uh, ghoulish books, some, some scary stories, some ghost stories, stuff like that. And this was one that it was over by the Stephen King, Stephen King section. Thought I'd pick it up, check it out. Uh, the next book... Uh, is actually one I uh, picked out for my wife. Uh, sorry for the background noise, guys. I'm in the garage. Uh, there's a motorcycle going by, whatever. So anyway, this one I picked up for my wife. She's a huge fan of Dune. Uh, she grew up watching the original. In fact, she introduced me to it for the very first time the other day before we watched the new film. Uh, I like them both. Honestly, I think they're both equally good. They both have their uh, certain qualities that make them good. Uh, I like the narration of the original. That really helps uh, people who are unfamiliar with the novel uh, to understand what's going on. But I like the... Um, the more updated style of the new film. So anyway, uh, found this. It's, uh, it was at the bottom of a cart, uh, getting ready to be put on the shelves. Uh, Dune. My wife had the hardback and the graphic novel at one time. Um, but I guess when our kids were young, they tore it up or it got lost in the move or whatever. I'm not sure. But I found this. I got it for um, It's the new edition of the paperback. Uh, if you have not seen either the original or the new film, I highly recommend you check them both out. I would recommend you watch the original first and then the new film. Because the original, um, you have a better chance of understanding what's going on. But there's the description. I'm not going to read it for you because, you know, uh, allergies and everything's kind of running out of breath whenever I read so there you go uh, anyway the next book I purchased last night uh, at Barnes and Noble uh, I actually forgot I had a, a copy of this uh, it was included in 
a three-story book um, introduced by Stephen King, uh, who did the foreword for it. Um, I ha it, it was part of a, a Dracula, Frankenstein, and uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde book. Uh, that I completely forgot about. I thought I just had the um, the paperback version with just this story in it, which was really thin. Uh, so I wasn't really, it didn't really look well on my shelf. So I went ahead and picked this up. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And Other Stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, this has a gorgeous binding on it. It's it's like a rubbery pleather binding but it looks gorgeous it's got that gold printing on it um, there's the side binding there's the back all human beings are commingled out of good and evil robert louis stevenson the strange case of dr jekyll and mr hyde now i'm not sure what all stories are in this let's take a look real quick Okay, so it looks like there's the introduction. Uh, the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is the first one. Uh, other stories are Will O' the Mill, Markheim, Thrawn Janet, Olala, The Bottle Imp, The Isle of Voices, The Waif Woman, and The Body Snatcher. Um, also, here's the inside of the cover. Very very gorgeously done it actually it's actually very reminiscent of an old uh, victorian era book um, it's got like a glittery style uh, page edge with a built-in bookmark as you can see here fact it yep. there's a ribbon there very beautiful uh, I'm I'm really liking this uh, cover uh, there were a lot of others with similar covers at Barnes and Noble uh, but this is one I really wanted so I got it finally uh, from the books that I purchased yesterday. Uh, this, is, this isn't counting the books that I'll be going into here in a minute from a few weeks ago that I bought from th a thrift store. This book, uh, while I was at Barnes & Noble, uh, I was checking out the Stephen King section. And I saw a paperback of Salem's Lot. And I picked it up. And it was about 25 bucks, 26 bucks, somewhere around there. As I was over taking a look at Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I noticed this that was, it was the same price as Salem's Lot, but had three stories instead of one. It's 25 bucks. It's Carrie the Shining and Salem's Lot. Nice little hornet on the cover here. Uh, love... The uh, print, the lettering, very nice. It's impacted from the front inward. Um, and it looks like a leather-bound book. I'm sure it's pleather, but it looks very leathery. Here's the side. Here's the back, the Stephen King logo. The pages have a silver sheen to the edges, which is very nice. And once again, it comes with a built-in bookmark, this time blood red, just like the lettering. Very nice. I cannot wait to read this. Uh, I, I have not watched Salem's Lot yet, uh, so I'll be going into this blind. I know it's about vampires, but that's about it. I've seen Carrie, both the original and the remake, and Rage Carrie 2, which was how actually how I was introduced to Carrie. I've also seen The Shining and uh, Doctor Sleep.
So, uh, I have not read the books yet. I'm more of a audiobook guy when it comes to Stephen King, um, since his books are so long. But I've been getting into collecting his books because I love the audiobooks so much. In fact, my favorite that I recently listened to was The Institute. Um, I, I honestly, uh, yes, it's New King, but it's King at his best. Uh, there's not really a lot of filler in it. It's it's really, it's gripping. It holds your attention. Um, another one that I recently listened to that I enjoyed was The Outsider, which is very reminiscent of It. Um, and The Institute is very reminiscent of Firestarter. Um, then there was A Long Walk, which was a Bachman book that I really enjoyed as well. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait to actually read these. Uh, it'll probably be, um, I, I'm reading more often, uh, I haven't really been reading a lot lately because I've been in the process of writing so many books, uh, and going to school. I'm in my third, third year of college now working on my bachelor's, um, plus my son is homeschooled, so I'm kind of. Uh, balancing that with the wife and uh, family time and all that. So I don't really get a lot of opportunities to actually sit down and read. But I'm going to start reading more at night, uh, shortly before bed. Uh, I think that's the best, best time, really. So let's go ahead and move this off to the side. And now we're going to get into uh, the books that I purchased from a thrift store. Uh, I got a ton of Stephen King books for $25, which is a hell of a bargain, uh, considering one usually goes for anywhere between $25 to, you know, sometimes almost $50. Bucks. So starting off... Uh, the first one of these is Cujo, uh, a novel by Stephen King, author of Firestarter. It is one of the original version, original covered versions. Um, there's the back portrait of Stephen King with his beard. Um, the inner binding or the inner uh, summary, introduction, whatever you want to call it. Pause it right there. Yeah, right there. Okay. I'm not going to read all these since um, I got so many to go through, but there's. Uh, I think that might be Stephen King's bio. There. Okay. Um, but let's see. What's the, uh, the copyright in the print year on this? All right, this was by Viking Press of New York. Uh, copyright 1981 uh, for this printing and original copyright 1971. No, 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 wait a minute. Uh, portions of text from the song uh, Sugary, words by Robert Hunter, music by Jerry Garcia, uh, copyright 1971. Um, other copyrights for songs include uh, 1940 and 1968. Um, so this, it looks like it is a first, first edition of Cujo. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I did watch the movie for the first time a few months ago. Uh, I enjoyed it, but it really leaves you hanging. I'm going to read this when I get a chance, and hopefully it'll give a little bit more depth into the ending because in the movie, spoiler alert, the mom gets scratched or uh, bit or something. I can't, it's, it's been a little while. Um, so you would think she's going to end up with rabies, 
But the movie ends with like a sigh of relief almost. So, you know, I'd like to see how the book ends. Uh, next is also a part of the uh, the lot I got from the thrift store. Uh, it is Thinner by Stephen King, written as Richard Bachman. Uh, I watched the movie, um, I think it was last winter. I wasn't that impressed with the movie. Um, but this was part of the lot, so I, you know, I got it as part of the lot for 25 bucks total. So, not bad. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, it, it's very, um, very seems low budget, almost. There's the inner card. You can pause it right there if you like. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Uh, so this one, with it being a Bachman book, um, this was copyrighted in 1984 by Richard Bachman. So, um, I'm sure the book is a lot better than the movie, uh, simply because the, the movie was so low budget. Um, very, very low quality um, special effects. Uh, this one is one that I am, I, I saw, and as soon as I got it, I cherished it. It is The Bachman Books by Stephen King, written as Richard Bachman. And the reason I cherish this so much is because it has a story in it that is no longer in print it is in fact Stephen King removed it from printing <clears throat> what is that book you may ask well it is rage uh, also it also has a long walk which I really enjoyed uh, road work and the running man uh, if you don't know about rage it is about a school shooter uh, I have not read it yet. I haven't even listened to the audiobook, but I've heard a lot about it. And I have to say, I'm really intrigued. And I'm glad I was able to get a cop, uh, my hands on a copy of one, uh, simply because you can't really find rage anymore. Simply because Stephen King took it uh, out of print. Um, here's the. Inside, okay. Um, back there, you go. There's that. Um, copyrights on this are uh, 77, 79, 81, and 82. So I can't wait to start reading this. Next, I actually got two copies of this book. Uh, so I didn't really feel it necessary to bring the other copy out here. Uh, it was included in the lot. So I may sell it to anyone who wants it. Um, I don't know. Who knows? But it is four past midnight. I'm going to have to peel this sticker off of it too at some point. Uh, I, I haven't heard much about this book. It there you go if you want to pause that and read it, zoom in, whatever, read it. Um, there's the back. So this came out. The copyright on this looks like 1990. So there you have that. Uh, and at, 
as you see, it is a pretty massive book. Um, about the size of Carrie, The Shining, and uh, Salem's Lot combined. <laughs> uh, the next one, which I'm really interested in uh, starting on, because I heard about it on another reviewer's channel, <clears throat> who's in, into books, and Stephen King especially, is Gerald, Gerald's Game. Gerald, Gerald, <laughs> how do you pronounce it? Um, but basically, uh, from what I gather, it's it takes place in one room with a woman tied to the bed. And that's the majority of the book. Uh, so I can't wait to kind of dip into this, this one. Um, there's the uh, back Stephen King's uh, picture. There's the... Uh, Synopsis, I think. Ooh. Some dead spiders in there. <laughs> I'll have to clean these out. So there's that. Uh, because there's dead spiders and stuff in that one. Um, I'm not going to go into the copyright and all that. I need to get it cleaned out. Uh, before I do all that. <clears throat> uh, up next in the lot is Dolores Claiborne. Dolores Claiborne. Sorry. Um, I watched the movie for the first time uh, last winter. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. good. Uh, so I was happy to see this was part of the uh, lot. There's the uh, inside. See, are there any surprises in this backside? No. All right, good. All right. So there's that. Next on the list is Needful Things, the last Castle Rock story. <clears throat> As you can see, it's got very... Uh, copper-like uh, foil finish on the lettering and red, blood-red foil finish on Stephen King's name. <clears throat> uh, I don't know much about Needful Things, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just really getting into Stephen King. Uh, like I said, I'm, I started with his audiobooks, so I'm really, uh, really just kind of a novice when it comes to Stephen King right now. <clears throat> okay, so we got two more guys. Next is the Tommy Knockers. I got about halfway through this audiobook on Audible, and while I was picking my daughter up from work one night, um, I accidentally hit something on my uh audible and it skipped a huge chunk of the book and I could not find where I left off. So rather than uh, going back through, um, I was, it wasn't really catching my interest anyway. Um, I just kind of left it for now. I may go back and re-listen to it while I'm reading it, uh, at some point. Um, but yeah, it's a nice, Nice cover by Putnam. There's the back. Looks like Stephen King was a little chunkier back then with his beard. There's the inner cover. There's the back cover. All right. And then finally we have the largest Stephen King book I have yet to come across. Insomnia. Uh, look, look at how many pages that is. Uh, for comparison, let me show you. For comparison, um, see there's 
four past midnight. Uh, it's a little bit shorter than Insomnia. Not much. A couple pages, it seems. In fact, let's see. Four Past Midnight has... Seven hundred and sixty-three pages in this edition. Uh, Insomnia has a grand total of seven hundred and eighty-seven pages. Uh, to put that into contrast even further. This edition, Salem's Lot, Carrie and the Shining, would seem is still shorter. Let's see how many pages are in it. Oh, never mind. This is actually longer. Uh, there's uh, 1,094 pages in it, or in this. <laughs> Not the book it, but in this one. Uh, I think the pages are uh, thinner, so it just seems like it's shorter. So, but this is also three books in one, also. Uh, I don't know much about Insomnia. Um, I'm not sure if the Robin Williams and, uh, who was, was it Robert De Niro or Al Pacino movie of the same name. I'm not sure if that was actually based on this book or not. Uh, and I have not watched that movie in, God, almost, almost 20 years, I want to say. But there's the inside. Oops. There's the uh, back. So... Anyway, there you have it, guys. My book haul for the month of October. I can't wait to dig into these books and start reading them. Uh, also, don't forget to check out my book, Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade, available on Amazon and Audible, as well as other great book retailers. Also, for the kid in your life or for the young at heart, check out my books, Hollow Screams Day of the Dolls and Hollow Screams Ghost House. I've been Shannon. This has been Comic Gen TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Gen TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.